I'm not going that far. Bring in the DD. We I don't think he, I don't think <laughs> believe it or not, I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm not with you on that. I'm not even here with this. G, 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 stop He's talking. Bridge too far. Okay, you're just digging the biggest possible hole ever. Stop talking. I'm just saying that's what they got. Totally in your camp. No, 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 no. Defense wins championships. Defense wins championships. Defense wins championships. No, defense defense not, that's that's a that's a foul. Right, listen. No, it's not. I, we, we didn't make the rules. No, it's not. We didn't make the rules. He's so right. Quarterbacks you win championships, Adidi. No, no, no. You, you know it. Yes, they do. Championships with defense. I need nope, some. I need some clout <laughs> since me and Maurice got into it. Now I'm glad somebody agrees with you me. You can't <laughs> completely agree. Come no. on now, this is insane. That that's old school. It's not the case anymore. The quarterback is more important than the defense. Excuse me? No. No, I'm not even talking about I'm not even talking about the Ravens in 2000. Just think a few years ago, the Super Bowl in Atlanta, right? The Ravens and their I mean, sorry, the Rams and their high-flying offense come into Atlanta and what do the Patriots do? Completely, totally, completely Tom shut Brady. them down. <laughs> oh my okay. God. It's not like he scored any points either. The Rams quarterback the was quarterback Jared Goff. No, that was all about defense. Come on now. Why have the Kansas City Chiefs ever fallen short? Because of the quality of their defense, which has been a, there. But, what if, but they've been now. the best team in football over the last three years, the Chiefs, and they won a Super Bowl. And one. You've got to have one. the quarterback. They won one. Well, They've been the best offense in Super Bowl. If being the best offense was all that mattered, Adidi, they would have won three. How many Super Bowl? First of all, he's only been playing for three years. They might win again this it year. It was the Bengals defense. <laughs> Listen, it was the Bengals defense, not the Bengals offense, that won the game in Kansas City that got them mm. to the Super Bowl. Ah, that's, instead you, of you, you tell him, Aditi. That's so, not completely so, so, That's not completely true. So, 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 look, look at him. Look. I was here. Aditi. I, I was Wait a second. She got him stuttering. Wait a second. <laughs> Wait a second. Hold on. She got him stuttering. The Bengals defense played. And it was Aaron Donald. P.S. By the way, it was Aaron Donald with a defensive play. That's what I said. That and how, that's what I said, how many, And how many games? And Aaron Donald hasn't won any championships <laughs> except when they had a great quarterback match down. <laughs> That's it. Okay. That's his only title. Way to come back with that rebuttal. That's what that, that, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. A they hold on. What they've been to the Super Bowl with yes, golf. You need, we yes. Can't. But wait, hold on a second. You can't make your TV. Like us <laughs> yelling at each other. Aditi, I'm like, going to yell at you. Hold on a second. <laughs> I let stay you right there. the Bengals. Stay right just on the yell at First of all, <laughs> the Bengals defense played great in the second half in that Chiefs game. You are correct. However, they were down huge because their defense was crap in the first half. And they wouldn't have won the game unless both units played great in that second half. So the defense did play great, but so did the offense. They had to come well, back. But of course, but it, no, and of course, look, and it's so funny you say this because I literally just had this conversation with someone two days ago. The great Bill Arnsparger, the late Bill Arnsparger, when I was a student at Cornell, he was coaching. And he, of course, was the architect of the no-name defense and the Miami Dolphins, all of that. Anyway, Bill Arnsparger, one of the first things that he ever taught me was don't let anybody denigrate special teams. That football really and truly is three phases. Offense, defense, special teams, every phase is vitally important. So what I'm saying to you is not that offense isn't important, not that the quarterback isn't important. Of course it is. But to act as if the offense has some sort of primacy over the defense, that it's more important to have a great offense than it is to have a great defense. No, 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 no. Because at the end of the game, the game is decided on who makes the defensive play. The reason that the Bills lost that insane game last year was not that their offense couldn't score, it's that their defense couldn't stop the Chiefs. You need a defense to win in January and February. Done. Amen. You can get by on a high last, level. Last thing, and then I want to let, let, let get Jason in. <laughs> you can't have a crap defense and win. I agree with you there. <laughs> but I would blood. take a great quarterback and a mediocre defense over a great defense and a mediocre quarterback any day of the week. 30 years ago, when you, 20 years ago with the Ravens, when the game was different and the Giants, okay, it was different. Nowadays, with the rules all favoring the offense, the quarterback is more important, and 
The quarterback I can keep for 15 years. I can't keep a really – every year, okay. the, the best defense is different team because I can't keep a defense together because I need too many good players to keep a defense great year after year after year. But quarterback, I only need one guy. Like That's a very fair point. That's like a, Until you said that, I was sort of actively thinking, okay – could I win with an offense that runs the ball, doesn't make mistakes, but a great defense and a game-changing player? I would argue that I could, but you're right if you're thinking long-term strategy and how am I building my team, then yeah, of course. A quarterback has way more longevity and has way more influence. But are you the Rams who are selling out for just one year in that one Super Bowl, or are you thinking about building the foundation of a franchise that you hope sticks around for a period of time? Sticks around in the conversation. That is a very fair point, Adam. I'll give you that. Good rebuttal. Good answer. All right, Jason, go ahead. <laughs> I just want to know when we can see the Knicks tag team match of Aditi and Maurice against Bull and Tyvis. I'd pay $60 parking <laughs> to see Aditi come off the top rope with a chair. That would be funny. And whack one of you guys with it. That's all. Last that's night, all I they br- Jason brings this up, Aditi, because I took, my, took Aaron to wrestling last night. I had not gone to wrestling in over 30 years. And actually, there was a tag team match where it was two men and one woman on each team. And at one point, this was the, one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Whenever the wo- the woman, one of the women would tag in, the other woman had to come in too. But at one point, and I know, you know, it's, you could say, obviously it's, it's fake. However, you they are. say that on a it's, nationally syndicated it's show not, like It's this? not well, fake. You know what I mean? It Santa Claus is real and so is wrestling. It's not fake. It, they're great athletes. Of course not fake, fake. Not fake. Well, you know what I mean. Hello. They're great athletes. <laughs> At one point, the one of the women in this tag team picked up one of the guys and body slammed him. Aditi, can you pick up Tyvis? Can you pick up Tyvis? I'm not going to ask you to pick up Bull. You can't can you pick, pick me up. up if, 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 he jumps, if, if he jumps and helps me out, <laughs> sure. But let me tell you, I am so much stronger than I thought I was after I survived that minus 15 wind chill on Saturday. I'll give you credit. I just, it's funny because Alvin Kamara and I were talking about this after the game. We don't ever need to do it again, but we suddenly feel a lot better about how tough we must be yeah. <laughs> that we survived that outing. I Aditi, will say that. I had my son one- there. We were in the club yeah. seats, and I was telling these guys, first quarter, I'm like, this ain't bad. We're all right. By the fourth quarter, I couldn't feel anything. I couldn't see color. <laughs> I thought I was going to die. And I'm looking at my 12 year old, like, hey, you ready to go? He's like, no, I'm good, man. He's like, are you serious? And that last drive, I told them, if the Browns scored, it would have kicked a field goal to send it to overtime. <laughs> I was going to go down to the, an extra point. I was going to go down the field and fire Kevin myself. <laughs> Do the humane thing, go for two, and end this one way or the other. Get me I in the car. Literally- no kidding, Jason. I'm on the sideline standing next to Doug Miller. So the way that it works for a sideline reporter, right at the end of the game, you get this post-game interview. And I'd been on the Brown sideline. I'd gone over to the Saints sideline when it looked like it was going that way. I talked to the head of PR for the Saints, Doug Miller, who, God bless him, had asked my producer the night before. He goes, you're not putting the sideline reporter on the sideline, are you? Because she will die. <laughs> he was concerned about me. But my old buddy, Peter John Baptiste, who runs PR for the Browns, was like, oh, it's not that bad. You'll be fine. That's obnoxious. <laughs> mm. So I'm standing next to Doug Miller. The Browns are driving. I've already arranged with Doug Miller that if the Saints win, I'll talk to Alvin Kamara. This is what we're going to do. This is the camera. All of a sudden, it looks like the Browns are driving. And I go to Doug and I say, if they score, I'm really sorry, but he better go for two. Right. <laughs> 100% yes. Uh, yes. There was I, no way that I was lasting any longer. Well, well, by the way, Alex Van Pelt today said he would have gone for two. Well, Good. Oh, well, Didi, I got a question about that because if they are going for two, there are some speculation that uh, you're who, – who's he? De Podesta. Uh, <laughs> he would have called that from the booth. You are – is D Podesta really pulling the strings? I got to get the inside information. No. Like, I, I, so just wanna, I need you to corroborate like, the story. So I'm shooting it down. On. Uh, Do you not remember the Browns getting in trouble for Ray Farmer calling down to the sideline? Like, that's, seriously? That's why they be yeah. asking. Yeah. So they, Come on. Paul's not on a headset seriously, during like, the game. That's if that's out there, I, I that's feel ridiculous. Like, <laughs> it's like, what if I was on the other side? And Mike Tomlin would sit here and say, I'm not giving you your pound of flesh. I'm not giving you your pint of blood. I'm not even answering that. I'm going to start doing that, guys.
Like when people ask me things that I just think is so well, the brother, it got the brought, brother is brought it. The reason me. in G's defense. Your and, people brought this up. It uh, wasn't me. And, it, it was and, you what guys. People. <laughs> what people? What people? What <laughs> people? Tony, Tony, Tony Grossi. No, no, no. Tony that Grossi that brought that, that to the that table. What saying? What's that? I said, who's saying that? Are there people so, inside that building? So named, Tony Grossi. Named people? T Tony Grossi, who I don't take him seriously personally, <laughs> but he wrote, apparently wrote some article behind a paywall, which I obviously will not pay to read, but other people <laughs> tweeted it out, where he basically said the Browns uh, coaches are totally run by Paul D. Podesta and that Kevin Stefanski has to throw a lot or he's going to get fired, which makes no sense there it is. because they run more than most teams in football. There it is. Here, Paul D. Podesta has pretty much convinced owner Jimmy Haslam the only way to build a Super Bowl team is by consistently throwing for explosive plays, which is pretty much true, that part, by the way. And the way he writes that makes him, th you know, he's just clueless. Stefanski's job is safe because he's completely adhering to D. Podesta's advanced statistics or analytics. Because <laughs> he's scared of the word analytics like a lot of people here. Uh, models and not resisting them. Disagreeing with or rejecting the possessions research would be Stefanski's quickest uh, way out of town, which is beyond stupid, Aditi, because the Browns run more than most teams. Not my words, right? Tony Grossi's words. How silly are those, do those comments look in that article? I, I need to come up with something when I just don't even want to bother discussing something that yeah. is you, so... Oh, ridiculous. it's it's out there. You know what you do? You say, Pass. <laughs> Pass. I pass. I pass. pass. I'm just here so I don't get fined. Can we talk about how dirty Derek Carr was done? Can we talk about that for a minute? He yeah. was. He yeah. was. It's good. our overtime segment today. Well, it, it, he I mean, it's kind of it's kind of smart though, no? Because if he gets hurt, then they guarantees his contract next year. Okay, but you know what? Like, this is what the problem is, right? It's yeah. sort of, and it's funny because my crew this week includes James Lofton, who, of course, is in the Hall of Fame. And James Lofton sends me a text message last night when we we're talking about this. And he says, yeah. you know, there's this movie before your time. And I can't remember what the movie is called because obviously it was before my time. But he says it's just these two football players sitting in a hot tub. And the line that they say is that when you say it's a business, the owners say, no, it's a game. And when you say it's a game, the owners say, no, it's a business. And I will tell you that earlier this year, so last year, going back to last year, mm -hmm. Derek Carr's brother, David, I covered when he was a New York giant and he was tremendous to me. The backup quarterback is always an amazing person to talk to, by the way, because he has time and he'll explain things. David Carr, one of the classiest people ever. And then he was my colleague when I was at the NFL Network. And a year ago, when it looked like what's going to happen with Derek Carr, I remember talking to David extensively and being like, he should come to Pittsburgh. And if he wants to like stay in my guest room while he visits Pittsburgh, my house is open. Like tell him to come to Pittsburgh. This is before Mitch Trubisky of Mentor Ohio and Kenny Pickett and all that. And David and I talked at the time and he had said, I really think that Derek is going to play for the Raiders or he'll just call it a career. And so I had Derek this season and I asked him, and Derek said that that's exactly how he felt, that the truth of the matter was that, you know, he respected and admired Kobe Bryant so much, who spent his entire career with one team, that Derek Carr himself felt like he'd see these guys that he thought he was better than winning playoff games. And it's something he's never done. But he felt it was such an important lesson to give to his children that he stuck with one team, that if the ship is going down, he's going down with the ship, that through all of the ups and the downs and the drama and the craziness and everything, he was loyal to that club, to that franchise, to that organization through all of it. And I'm telling you, when I came out of that, I just really felt so strongly about his sincerity and why it was so important to him to give his everything to the club that drafted him and took a chance on him. Yeah. I respect that. I respect that too. But you know what? Just yeah. like that, they threw him out like the trash. We, and you know it's no you must you know it's decision? Sure, it's a smart business decision. Have yeah. we all been on the end of something like that? Yes, every single Damn one right. of us yeah. has felt like we've given everything to an employer and then had to learn, you know what, they don't give two you-know-whats about us. I've done they will never times. love us the way we love them. We all have lived it. It's awful to live it. It still sucks from afar to watch it. There's it no, just hurts. There's and no, there's no loyalty it, in it, man. No One of the classiest team. guys in the NFL could potentially be a distraction. Come on. 
Come oh, he, on. You don't think he wanted to go home at that point? I mean, I think it was one of those things where yeah. it's a mutual decision, mutually yeah. amicably agreed upon that no one's going to say anything negative about anybody else. And that's that. But, Dita, you don't I think, think I that mean, that's, it, you know, but it just, it, it still makes me sad because there's still, yes, we all get it. We get it. Right. Football is big business. We get it. Okay. Obviously, it's big business. But isn't there a piece of you? that still wants to believe in the idealism, the romanticism of, oh, you, Derek Jeter plays for one club his whole entire life, and he's the captain, and he means everything. Mm -hmm. And Eli Manning, even on the way out the door, there was only one club. You know, like, you still want to kind of feel that way, that it's not just let me go to the highest bidder or I'm a commodity. You want to feel like you mean something more than that. The game is the game, always. I'm going to just say this. Tom Brady was released by the by the Patriots after no, six, no, no, he was a free agent. Six Super Bowls, he and they didn't, they didn't even they throw didn't him a contract. Him. Yeah, but he wanted out too. He wanted, he wanted out. out. Nah, That's they That's they ain't throw him nothing on the table. My boy, my boy Sherm got fired by the sack by the uh, by the uh, Seahawks. He talked about it all the time. He's hurt. I mean, he's no, it's hurt. True. yeah, he was hurt for but sure. <laughs> and we know this. This is the business. I haven't given up hope. That's what I'm saying, Tyvis. Like, yeah. yes, of course, you're telling the truth. Even Tom Brady's dad said that at some point it's going to end, and when it ends, it'll be ugly. And that's when he was still with the Patriots. Everybody knows it, but, like, I still want to hope or dream or believe or aspire to it, you know? Like, I want to believe that Nick Chubb is Jim Brown, that he's never going to be with anybody else, and he will always and forever be a Cleveland Brown running back, and not that's if, that. Not if G. Bush making the decisions he can't rid of. <laughs> She said, I wanted to get in the ball. Y'all didn't want to get the ball no more. So we might as well get something for him. She said, <laughs> Jerome Ford is, is Jerome Ford time. The sad part is they couldn't even get that much for Nick Chubb in a trade as good as he is. It hurt my they heart. They couldn't. Probably second. I wanted Nick Chubb to be at the wrestling title so bad. I did too, man. It, it bothered me too because it was this this season was tailor made for, for him. The, to, I, I, for him in the defense, it was just tailor made for them to just shine. So Adi, let's confirm that Aditi has said that anything about the Podesta ruling the the on the field stuff <laughs> on the with an iron fist is absurd and right. shouldn't even be discussed. Is yeah, that right. It's absurd like that. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm not. I, I'm not buying there. Or, Aditi, as, no. or as Ty said, as my buddy said, pass. Adidi, <laughs> Adi, Adi, let's let's yeah. talk about the, now. We know the Browns don't have a first round pick, so second round. Who do you think, after looking at this team, how this season has gone with Deshaun Watson being I'm gonna see this. healthy for next year? Do you get him a receiver, as there, in like a Jalen Hyatt, or do you go defensive and shore up that defense? Here second we go. round pick. She like defense. Yeah, I, go ahead. You know what? I really, really, truly, and I. It's funny because when I was a young writer, I remember the first year I was covering the NFL and everyone kept saying best available player, best available player. And I was like, what nonsense? Like you clearly have holes come up now. But the truth of the matter is, is you never know who's going to be healthy a week or a day in the training camp or midway through the season. And you never, you never know how much impact somebody could have. I'll, I'll go back to that first year I covered the Giants they had, I don't know how many pass rushers. I think they had O.C. Umanura, Justin Tuck, Matthias Kiwanuka, and they took Jason Pierre-Paul. Mm. And you know what? All four of those pass rushers were, were key in winning a Super Bowl the next year. And so it's sort of like you think this is a position you don't need, but you never know what you need, and you never know how you can use a player, and the best coaches are going to deploy the best players that they possibly have. So on the face of it, there are more defensive needs. You need more defensive depth. You definitely need some sort of defensive tackles. You need to be able to stop the run. You need to shore up that defensive front. But again, it's like, what does the market tell you? What's available? Who's there? Who knows? I mean, I, I still think it's so early. It's so yeah. early to sit here unless you have one of the top five picks. It's hard to sit here and identify and say, okay, this is absolutely what you need to go and get in the draft. Dina, there's a lot of anger and bitterness and resentment and hostility and toxicity. And you throw the word out and it fits with how people feel about the Browns right now. G, I'm talking to you. Mm. With, I'm confused right now. With two weeks yeah. left, how – I mean, I guess you win the last two games is the easy answer, but how is there anything that can be done to sort of swing this and, and make fans feel good about this team? I, I have my own particular things that I think, but I'm curious what you think. 
is there any way that to swing this and have a good feeling, a successful end to this season? What does that look like? D.Y. Great. I mean, I think that that's exactly it. I think it's two wins. I think it's going into the offseason on a high note. I think it's feeling like, okay, Deshaun Watson has gotten his legs under him, that he's gotten this team there, that you've got some players that can make some tough plays, that can, you know, make routine catches look routine. Do that, David and Joko. I'm looking at you, you know, like right. feel good and also feel sort of angry and motivated going into the off season. You know, it's, it, it's funny. It, it's a fine balance. Like if you lose, you want to sit here and say, okay, we fell short. We're going to work that much harder in the off season. But the truth is you want to feel like you're hopeful. Like you want to feel like, okay, we missed out on some chances and that drives us to continue to work because we're really not that far away. And so if you can go into the off season having won a couple games in a row, feeling good about what you've done. You're like, okay, well, a, some crazy things happened this past season, but we're all together now. This entire offense returns together. This is what we are working towards. We will all be together for the whole year. This is what we're doing. Like, let that drive us. And, and I've mentioned this before on the air with you that I remember Kurt Warner saying that that was what sort of catapulted the Cardinals into the off season the year before they went to the Super Bowl against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And it's the way that you end a season really, really does help inform what your off season is. And that off season, it is key. It does matter. Yeah. You know, you don't get to just show up week one and think, okay, now we're going to run the table. And that's that. I think for the fans, Watson playing great means even more than winning these two games. Maybe for the team, the win matters more. But if I'm a, as a fan, if Deshaun Watson kicks ass against Washington and Pittsburgh, now if he does that, they'll probably win the games. But if he kicks ass, even if they lost to Washington, I know it would suck if they lost to Pittsburgh. But if he looks like a stud and throws for six to 700 yards in these two games, five, six touchdowns, this looks like an absolute superstar. Yeah, that totally springboards the excitement. Sure, again. but you know what, Adam? Here, here's what I'd respond with. I don't think that – and I don't want to – I don't know how to say this without I, I'm most definitely not being disrespectful to the people that pay our paychecks, right? Because it's fans that enable all of us to have the careers that we have. So again, I'm not trying to show disrespect to the fans, but I think sometimes the people outside the locker room don't necessarily have the fully nuanced view sure. of what's being asked. And That's so fair. I look at the way that Deshaun played on Saturday I thought he played incredibly well. I thought that the knock on him was that he hated cold weather, that he couldn't win in cold weather, that he wasn't tough enough to handle that, that this was not going to be where he was at his best. I thought Deshaun played a tremendous game. Did he have the numbers to show it? No. But could Amari Cooper have caught a totally catchable pass? Yeah. Could David Njoku have caught a totally catchable pass? Yeah. Could I keep going? Yeah. DPJ, go Those ahead, are say all it. reflections on the quarterback. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jason. No, I said go. You, you missed DPJ, DPJ two yeah. weeks in a row. Yeah. I mean, and again, yeah. I think that Deshaun has played phenomenally well the past two weeks. I just don't know that the average fan sees that for what that is. It's the same way when, you know, a quarterback has high interception numbers and you blame the quarterback, but it's like, well, how many of those interceptions are actually on the receiver and how many are on the quarterback or how many were on the lineman that let didn't, you know, protect against a defensive line and getting his hands up. There are so many other pieces to the puzzle that sometimes the average fan doesn't see. And I would say yeah. inside that building, there's a lot of excitement about the way that Deshaun is playing, the throws that Deshaun is making, the decisions that Deshaun is making and who he is back there. I, I got a question. This is slightly off kilter. No surprise, surprise. Um, I like to look at uh, now New Year's is coming up. Where are you now compared to where were you a year prior? And what is something you want to do to change something about yourself moving into next year? Wow. Deep question. That's very deep. I thought Professionally it was about or the Browns. Personally? Either or. Yeah, yeah, I thought, is this about the Browns? Like, where are no, you? No, no, no. <laughs> it's about you. It's about you. I think we got to all answer that question now. 
about you, Aditi? Oh, gosh. Stump. <laughs> I'm limited in a lot of things I can say, so yeah. I have to figure out how to say this. I, um, I'm professionally in a very, very, very different place, as you all know. A year ago, I was working for the NFL Network, working a lot, working in the daily grind of daily coverage of the National Football League. <coughs> now I'm at CBS where I get to be a part of game broadcasts, which is a completely, totally different entity. But I think the bigger piece here is that I am... Gee, you're going to make me start crying. Oh, I, I am mean too. way, way, way more present in my children's lives. And I don't mean physically present, I mean emotionally, conversationally. I am not, I know way less about the transactional nature of the National Football League right now. I know way more about everything else, about the way things actually happen behind the scenes, inside locker rooms, inside meeting rooms. But transactionally, is Carson Wentz starting or not? I, I, I'm later on that than I was a year ago. Because a year ago, no matter what I was doing, whether I was at my son's soccer game or I was allegedly playing Candyland or Barbies, <laughs> this was right next to me. Mm. It is not now. Yeah, and um, I missed it. I, I was on the radio yesterday and I missed that Carson Wentz was starting. But you know what? I played Barbies for an hour and a half with my daughter and had the best damn time because they are at this absurdly fun age and I'll never get it back. And so, um, see, I said I didn't want to cry. I feel way, way better about that. And what do I hope I'm better at? in this coming year, I hope I worry less. I hope I think about the future less and I think about the present more. I hope I um, stop thinking about what's around the corner. I'm definitely much, much better at that right now, but I'm still not as good at it as I wish I would be. Why are you doing this to me? You that's people? Flat, My team, you said this. That's, <laughs> hey, that's, that's great. It's a great perspective to have for people that you know, like you who work hard and, and, and you're jo in these type of jobs, it, it can, even when you're home, I get it. You're sometimes not home in your mind. Right. Aditi, we appreciate you as always. We love you. Happy new year. And we'll talk to you next week. Appreciate you. Thank you all so much for having me guys. Happy, happy, happy new year. Be safe. And I'll see you Tuesday.